Coffee, Cows, and Crops is produced by the Peace Country Beef and Forage Association and hosted by Extension Coordinator Johanna Murray. On this podcast, we discuss management practices and research results with scientists, ranchers, researchers, and farmers. We strive to share innovative information and farming practices supported by sound science and practical wisdom. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get learning. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Coffee, Cows, and Crops. Today I'm talking to Megan Snell, the research coordinator from Sarda Ag Research. So we're going to talk today about uh, some of Sarda's projects and uh, the research they do there. So before we get going, uh, Megan, can you introduce yourself and maybe tell us a bit about Sarda? Uh, hi everyone, my name is Megan Snell, like Joanna said, I'm the research coordinator at Sarda Egg Research. This is, will be my third growing season here at Sarda. A little bit about myself, I originally started out as a summer student at Chinook Applied Research Association out of Oyen, Alberta. Uh, I went and took my diploma in agricultural management from Olds College. I did a little bit of sales out of school, found that just uh, it wasn't my thing. Uh, luckily, when I moved up north, I able I was able to find a job in research. So here I am now. Awesome. And now, before we get into the really important stuff, I do have one more question. Um, somebody told me once what SARTA stood for, but I do not remember what it was. Uh, so what does SARTA stand for? <laughs> Smoky Applied Research and Demonstration Association. That's why we go by SARTA, because it's pretty long. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So uh, what projects are we talking about today? Uh, well, there's one that I wanted to highlight just because I, I have uh, some data I can share about it. It's our intercropping trial. So this trial involves six types of crops, wheat, barley, canola, flax, peas, and lentils. Cool. Um, before we get right into the project and the data and that sort of stuff, um, for anybody who's unfamiliar with intercropping, how do you set up an intercrop? And why why would you intercrop? Well, I guess what I can say about this trial is that that's what we're trying to fi- figure out with it, honestly. Um, a lot of the questions that we get from producers is, um, can I add this type of cropping to my rotation? What should I mix to have a successful intercrop? What seeding rate should be used? Uh, what can I spray or do I spray it all when I'm intercropping? And what is the nu- nutrient analysis when I apply fertilizer? Right. Yeah. That makes sense. So what kind of metrics and measurements are you using in this project? Like what, what are you using to... Um, evaluate? Um, So for this trial, we're looking at collecting data on wet and dry biomass of plant material because we are testing for four different types of seeding rates. Uh, For canola and flax, we are using a 50 to 75 percent of the recommended seeding rate. For wheat and barley, we are using 25 to 50 percent of the recommended seeding rate. And the pulses, we are keeping them at a total seeding rate uh, of 100 percent, which is the recommended, of course. I just wanted to add in to this for this trial too, just so it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, it's a we have one set of the trial that is a cereal plus pulse trial. So the cereals, of course, were the wheat, the barley, peas, and lentils. And then the second part of the trial, we have the pulse plus oil seed, which is the canola, flax, peas, and lentils. Right. And then we are using those seeding rates that I just listed. And so lodging ratings of the pulses, which is peas and lentils, because this trial is looking at improves harvest ability of pulse crops, uh, visual assessments on weed density. So the idea is that if we are using the higher seeding rate of oil seeds and cereals, uh, then we could potentially see a lower weed population. Right. And of course, maturity ratings we're doing as well. Because, for example, oil seeds have a much longer growing season than your pulse crops. So far, uh, what I have seen for this trial 
is that seeding oil seeds and pulses at the same time isn't the optimum way to seed intercrops, just because you're either going to see yield loss in either your pulses from pod shatter or your oil seeds from having to spray it too early and shrinkage in the seeds. Oh, interesting. Yeah. As for harvest data collection, where you're always looking at grain yield and quality uh, by separating the intercrop treatments and grain moisture after harvest. Right. And for all of these intercrops, are you just doing, um, say, flax and lentils and then another row of, and then another uh, plot, I guess, of canola and peas or, and stuff like that? Or are you doing uh, more crops together than that, like flax, peas, and canola or something like that? Uh, no, we're just doing, uh, like you were saying before, we're just putting the flax and the peas together, flax and lentils, and then so on with the canola and the cereal crops. Right. So there's only two types of crops that we're using for intercropping. And then, of course, we have our solo crops, which we are using as our checks. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So um, as you went through this project, was there anything that really stood out as interesting or um, some results that you thought were um, that surprised you or any of that sort of stuff? Uh, so far, I was... Uh, what really stood out to me was just the overall visual of the treatments when you're actually looking at the plots. Because in our first replication, it was easy to see and compare the difference in seeding rates of the crops and also the standability of the pulse crops too. I actually have uh, quite a few pictures on it. So if you go onto our website, uh, there will actually be our newsletter for February and I will be including the pictures that I have taken over the summer and at harvest. Awesome. Um, so with the, you've mentioned that the standability is uh, are hoping to be improved with both the peas and the lentils and that sort of stuff, but have you seen any significant uh, yield differences with the intercropping versus the monocrops? Um, so far the results, um, I see that the pulse in the cereal trial uh, we are seeing uh, significant differences in the yield data. Um, as for the pulse and the oil seed trial, I'm not seeing too much in the stats. I think that it may have to do with the maturity because, of course, peas are going to mature faster than oil, than oil seeds. So I'm thinking that I may have sprayed the oil seeds too early so it is it may have caused shrinkage right so i guess that uh leans a little bit into why these sorts of projects are important because i have heard research from uh saskatchewan and i think manitoba about um peas and canola actually working really well together but up here it's different growing season and possibly different crops so that maturity is a uh, a bit more of a factor. Actually, this that's one thing good about this trial is that it is in the Peace region and it's local. So pr producers will be able to access their information and find out what's the best intercrop for their own farms. Right. Yeah. Yeah, be able to, um, instead of having to infer from what uh, research done in Southern Manitoba, says you can actually find out what stuff in your area how, how it performs in your area and that sort of thing yeah because there there is i would say my own opinion there is a di huge difference from manitoba than to northern alberta <laughs> definitely yeah even from when i live down south coming up north huge difference mm -hmm. yeah. yeah for sure uh so speaking of um finding that data and being able to reference your local information. Um, where does the data you collect go? Where can people find it? Uh, so if you're wanting to find out additional updates on this trial, like I was saying before, I am working on an article for our next newsletter that's coming out on February. Um, to see the overall results, those will be available on our website, but not until March of 2022, once the trial is complete. And um, you can find our website at www.sarda.ca. Perfect. Uh, is there 
anything else you'd like people to know about this project or? Uh, so once this trial is complete, um, I would actually like to start doing some economic analysis on it mm -hmm. just to see what is the input cost of intercropping and how it compares to solo cropping and what you usually see on farms. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. That economic piece is so, so important for uh, any kind of manager, really. Um, and speaking of economics, I know inputs are a huge cost when you want to start doing uh, any sort of cash cropping. So what have you seen on the fertilizer side of things in this project? Uh, well, in this trial, we are focusing mainly on the pulses. So for this trial, we just took a fertilizer recommendation that we got from our soil samples. So we didn't add any urea to this trial. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so we're relying heavily that the pulse crop is going to release enough nitrogen throughout the year to sustain, to sustain the crop. Right. That's interesting. Because, yeah, urea can be pretty expensive. Exactly. <laughs> then maybe if we're able to cut out that cost, maybe doing intercropping might, might be worth it. But I would... I would love to do more intercropping trials in the future. I just, I think it's so interesting. Definitely. Well, and to be able to make, make the crop work for you a little more than you work for the crop is always good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and on that note with the, uh, with the economic analysis, what, uh, what will you be measuring for that, for that analysis and what sort of tools will you be using to, um, to create that, that data? Um, so for the economic analysis, like I was saying before, it's going to be solely based on the input costs. So that's going to be uh, your cost for fertilizer of, um, in this case, no N, but P, K, and S. Um, the, C, the total C cost that you're going to be using, because um, we are using different rates of, of seed than Potentially, that could uh, decrease the co the cost that you're spending on seed, and then chemical costs as well. And really, what I'm hoping for to see is that um, for this intercropping trial, we don't really need chemical because with the higher rates that we are using for our seeding rates, there's going to be more um, more pressure so that the weed population isn't able to come through if that makes sense. Yeah, we've talked about uh, that sort of stuff a little bit with our, our cocktail for forage trials that we've done at PCBFA, is just using them to kind of choke out the weed population. Yeah, and that's what we're hoping to see here too. Right on. Now, I know uh, Sarda's done a ton of different research projects and stuff like uh, your regional variety trials and all that sort of stuff. But is there any particular projects, other projects you'd like to talk about today that uh, you think are pretty neat or have got some inf interesting information? Uh, yeah, we're actually working on our canola seed size and depth trial right now. I'm actually finding that one really interesting. So I believe I'm just pulling this off the top of my head from what I can remember, but I believe it's three different seeding depths and four different seed sizes. And of course, all this information you're going to be able to find on our website, or you can even just give me a call and ask me for information as well. I don't mind answering any questions that uh, anyone may have. Uh, we also have a biostimulant trial that we're working on too. So this is testing a four package of biostimulant and we're testing it on canola, peas, and wheat. Okay. And this trial is also to be done in 2022. So data will be available in 2023, I believe, is when it should all wrap up. Right. And I guess for people who aren't super familiar with um, research and stuff like that in general, um, can you talk about a bit about why it's important to work on these projects for multiple years? Is that something I can spring on you a little bit? I guess one thing I have to say about research is that it's it's there to help. So what research really is, is we want to be able to register chemicals and um, 
find out what types of varieties of seed producers can use to benefit their farms. And the great part about the research associations that we have within Alberta, say, is it's unbiased research. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Uh, my other question before we sign off is how we've mentioned your website a couple of times, but are there um, any other places you want uh, people to know about that they can find information about the research that you're doing or uh, anything you guys you'd like to plug before we we sign off? Um, so we do have our Facebook page. If you just type in Sarda Egg Research on the search bar, it'll pop up right, right away. Uh, what we're planning on doing for this coming year is we want to do, uh, how can I explain this? It's kind of uh, like what's going on at Sarda and do like a weekly update on what, what we're up to. Um, you can also find us on Twitter if you prefer that. Um, our username is at SARDA6, and that's all capitals for SARDA. And you can also make sure to register on our website for our MailChimp. It only takes a minute. All you need is your email address, and you'll be able to get emails on um, any events that are, that are coming up and what's going on in the egg industry as well. Awesome. All right. Thanks again for coming on, Megan. And uh, for anybody interested in finding more, out more about Sarda, all of those links will be in the podcast description. And we will talk to you next time. Peace Country Beef and Forage Association is a research and extension group based out of Fairview, Alberta. Our mission is to help producers thrive in an agricultural system that is profitable, regenerative, and attractive to future generations. To learn more about what we do and see the results of our research trials or our archive of newsletters and fact sheets, check out our website at peacecountrybeef.ca. Want to get in touch? Have a burning question or a topic suggestion? Send us a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Thanks for listening.